In this segment five, uh, we'll talk about the aftermath of the 1975 debacle and specifically the governing body's attitude towards what had happened and how to handle it as the next few years brought in some unwelcome statistics. In 1977, Ray France says, the subject again surfaced in a session of the governing body. Though the same objections were raised, a motion passed that a statement should be included in a convention talk that Lloyd Barry was assigned to prepare. I understand that afterward, governing body members Ted Jarras and Milton Henschel talked with Lloyd about their feelings on the matter. Whatever the case, when the talk was prepared, no mention of 1975 was included. I recall asking Lloyd about this, and his reply was that he had just not been able to make it fit with his subject. Almost two years went by, and then in 1979, the governing body again considered the matter. By then, everything indicated that 1975 had produced a serious credibility gap. A number of members of the headquarters staff expressed themselves in that vein. One described 1975 as an albatross hanging around their necks. Robert Wallen, the governing body secretary, wrote as follows, quote, I have been associated as a baptized witness well over 39 years, and with Jehovah's help, I will continue to be a loyal servant. But to say I am not disappointed would be untruthful, for when I know my feelings regarding 1975 were fostered because of what I read in various publications. And then I am told in effect that I have reached false conclusions on my own that I feel is not being fair or honest. Knowing that we are not working with infallibility, to me, it is but proper that when errors are made by imperfect but God-fearing men, then corrections will be made and where errors are found." End of quote. Another member of the writing department, Raymond Richardson, is quoted as saying, Are not persons drawn to humility and more willing to place confidence where there is candor? The Bible itself is the greatest example of candor. This is one of the most outstanding reasons why we believe it, that is the Bible, to be truthful. Fred Rusk, also of the writing department, he wrote, despite any qualifying statements that might have been made along the way to admonish the brothers not to say that Armageddon would come in 1975, the fact is there were a number of articles in the magazines and other publications that more than hinted that the old system would re be replaced by Jehovah's new system in the mid-1970s. End of quote. Vivian reminded me that when her parents had a conversation with their uh, mentoring elder, John Elliott, who I believe had studied with them in the 1960s when they were new over from Denmark and struggling with the language, not particularly well read in Watchtower theology, but becoming active Jehovah's Witnesses, John later said to them when they asked about 1975 and what was said about it during those, during the build-up years from 66 onward, they denied any memory of the build-up, that is the, the emphasis or emphatic declarations in the literature, but John corrected them and said, no, no, it was definitely there. But the elder John's attitude seemed to be, well, we can forgive them once, which uh, unfortunately was the attitude too many of us took at the time because we didn't know anything of Watchtower's the Watchtower's wildness of speculation going back over three generations before that. Ray Friends then quotes another member of the service department, Merton Campbell. A sister called the other day on the phone from Massachusetts. She was at work, but, but both the sister and her husband are working to pay up bills that have accumulated because of sickness. She expressed herself as feeling so confident that 1975 would bring the end that they both were having trouble facing up to the burdens of this system. This example is typical of many of the brothers we meet." Unquote. Then Harold Jackson, also of the service department, is quoted, "'What is needed now is not a statement to the effect that we were wrong about 1975, but rather a statement as to why the whole matter has been ignored so long in view of the fact that so many lives have been affected. Now it is a credibility gap we are faced with and that can prove to be disastrous. If we are going to say something at all, let us speak straightforwardly 
and be open and honest with the brothers. And then finally, Howard Zenka of the service department wrote, we certainly do not want the brothers to read something or listen to something and then say in, in their own mind that the approach that we have taken amounts to a Watergate. More appropriately, Watchtower Gate. Others made similar comments. Ironically, some who now spoke the strongest criticism had themselves been among the most vocal before 1975 in stressing that date and the extreme urgency it called for. Some had even written some of the articles earlier quoted and approved of the Kingdom Ministry Statement commending those who were selling homes and property as 1975 drew near. Many of the most dogmatic statements about 1975 were made by traveling representatives, circuit and district overseers, all of whom were under the direct supervision of the service department. I remember that the, there was a similar dynamic going on in our congregations when I was, I was in three different congregations during those years from 1974 through 1977. And in all of them, it was the pioneers and the elders who were the most emphatic about the urgency. Some who expressed caution were kind of dis discouraged from even thinking of criticizing the Watchtower's emphasis because somehow we were disloyal. Somehow we were putting on the brakes when God wanted the work to speed up. Ray Franz goes on, in the March 6, 1979 session of the governing body, the same arguments against publish anything were advanced, that it would lay the organization open to further criticism from opposers, that at this late date there was no need to make an apology, that nothing really would be accomplished by it. However, even those so arguing were less adamant than in previous sessions. This was because of one factor in particular, the worldwide figures had registered serious drops for two years. The yearly reports on the total number participating in witnessing activity reveal this. In the period from 1970 to 1975, there was continual growth by 10%, 9%, 6%, 4%, 13.5%, and then almost 10% again by 1975. 1976, the number dropped to 3.7 percent growth and then in 77 and 1978 there was actually a negative of one percent and more. This drop, Ray Franz goes on, more than any other factor seemed to carry weight with the governing body members. There was a vote of 15 to 3 in favor of a statement making at least some acknowledgement of the organization's share in their responsibility for the error. This was published in the March 15, 1980 Watchtower. It had taken nearly four years for the organization, through its administration, finally to admit it had been wrong. Had for an entire decade built up false hopes. Not that a statement so candid, though true, could be made. Whatever was written had to be acceptable to the body as a whole for publishing. I know because I was assigned to write the statement and as in similar cases before, I had to be governed by not what I would have liked to say or even what I thought the brothers needed to hear, but by what could be said that would receive approval of two-thirds of the governing body when submitted to them. Today, that is 1983 when Ray wrote these words, all the decade-long build-up of hope centered on 1975 is discounted as being of any particular importance. The essence of Russell's word in 1916 is again, ex again expressed by the organization. It, quote, certainly did have a very stimulating and sanctifying effect upon thousands, all of whom can praise the Lord, even for the mistake. In the next segment we'll talk about 1914 and the generation concept.